What's up guys, Perry from Rockville here and today I'm going to show you how to set up your battery PAR 6RF rechargeable wireless DMX light. As you can see, it comes with the PAR light itself, an attachable dual bracket so we can attach the light onto a truss or angle it in different positions on the ground, and a power cable to power or recharge your light. So if you take the female end of your power cable and plug that into your light and plug the other end into your wall outlet, you'll see this LED come on letting you know that your light is charging. If your light is completely dead, it will usually take about 5 hours max to fully charge, and once it's fully charged, you can use the light from 12 to 18 hours. It also comes comes with a wireless RF remote that you can use to set your light into different modes or colors. So the first thing we can do to set up our light is attach the dual bracket. So I'm going to start by taking one of my washer pieces here and one of my screws. I'm going to take my washer piece here and line it up to the hole on the inside of the bracket. Then I'm going to take my screw and feed it through the other side of the hole. Then I'm going to line up the screw to the hole here on the side of the light and screw it on to lock it in place. Then we're going to do the same exact thing for the other side of our light. Now having this dual bracket attached to the light is going to be very important when we're using it for wall washing. Now when using the battery PAR 6RF for wall washing, you can either use the rubber feet on the bottom of the light so that the light is shining completely up, or you can use your dual bracket to angle your light towards your wall. If you're using the rubber feet, you're going to want to place your light flush against the wall, and if you're using the dual bracket, you're going to want to place your light a few inches away from your wall and angle your light until you find the right spot where the light is hitting your wall. From there, you can use any of the light modes for your setup but we're gonna get to that in a bit now the dual bracket is really cool because on top of using it on the floor it also allows us to truss mount our light for a truss mount setup you're gonna need a lighting clamp like our very own LC 70 we'll first want to remove this bolt here on top of our lighting clamp then you're gonna want to take your bolt and feed it through the two holes here on your dual bracket then you'll want to line up your lighting clamp and screw the bolt back onto the clamp then to attach your light to your truss you're gonna loosen this screw here line up the clamp to a spot on your truss and then tighten the screw to lock it in place and because the light is battery powered you can hang it onto your truss without having to run a power cable there's also an LED indicator that lets you know how much battery life your light has and when it's time to recharge you just plug in the power cable like we showed you earlier now another setup that uses the rubber feet on the bottom is to use the light to light up a totem stand or a DJ facade to use the battery par with a totem stand like our very own RTP 32w all you want to do is lift up the scrim and place the light in the center of the totem like so. To set up the par light with a DJ facade is going to be very similar to wall washing. You're just going to take the light and line it up flush against the inside of your DJ facade. And depending on the size of your facade, you can use multiple of these lights for a more illuminating effect. Now there are several mode options that we can use with the battery PAR 6RF that we can toggle through with the buttons underneath the LED display on the bottom of the light. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my light. To switch the mode your light is in, you'll just want to press this mode button here. And once you're in a mode, you can use the up and down buttons to go through the different setups. And then you can press the enter button to set any changes you've made. So let's talk about some of the modes built into the battery PAR 6RF. Starting with the sound mode labeled SOU, which will change the color of the light whenever sound is picked up by the built-in microphone inside of the light. There are four different controls for this sound feature, including a color change, color fade, color change plus strobe, and a color change, fade, and strobe all together. So for example, I'm in the first sound mode right now, so if I go ahead and clap, you'll see that the light starts changing color. The CL mode acts as the singular color change mode. So if we use the up and down buttons in this mode, you'll see we can go through all 32 available colors. We can automatically cycle through colors with the CC mode. We can set the light in a pulse mode with the EE setting. There's a color fade mode with the FF setting. And we even have a strobe mode with the ST setting. Now in this setting, you want to press the enter button. And from there, we can use the up and down buttons to switch the color of the strobe. Now for the C, C, E, E, and F, F modes, you can use the up and down buttons to control the speed of your fade, pulse, or cycle. For a full look at all of these settings, check out our cheat sheet here. Now because this is a RGB WA plus UV light, there are six different modes where you can adjust the intensities of the red, green, blue, white, 
amber, or ultraviolet LEDs. And playing around with these settings allow you to color mix and get different variations of these colors. Now if you don't want to be messing around with the back panel of your light, or if your light is out of reach, another quick way to set your light into different colors or modes is with the included RF remote. Let's go to Anthony right now who's going to show us how to set up the remote. What's up guys? Here I have the Battery Pro 6 RF and today I'll show you how to use and set up your RF remotes. This is the remote for the Battery Pro 6 RF. Included, it has a battery with it along with the capabilities to change any function you want via RF. To start, we're going to turn on our lights. On the back here is the power switch which we'll press to turn on the light. As you can see, we have a menu button, up button, down button, and an enter button. Along with that comes with a nice beautiful LCD screen that shows you which mode you are in within the light. Now to use the remote, we need to go into REN mode. And to get to that menu, we press the mode button until we reach REN. So now that we're in the remote mode, we need to find out if we're in REN 1 or REN 2. This is for designating if we're on the RF channel on the remotes. To find out what RF channel on the remotes, we simply go, go here, click enter, and you go down, use the up or down arrows, select one or two. Once you have a selection, hit enter. Now from there, once I set it to REN2, I can use the remote and it will change to any sort of function, any color I wanted to pick. Now that we're on REN mode, we could use the RF remote to change any color we want, from single colors, even like fade modes or snap modes. This unit has two RF channels that you could use for two groups of lights. For example, you can make 10 lights respond to remote control and then switch the remote control to affect another 10 lights. In order to do this, we need to set each light into RN1 or RN2. This light I'm going to have as RN2 and this light I'm going to have as RN1. I'm going to demonstrate by with the remote how to change each light by a different RF channel. So now I'm going to change my second light to RN1. Now, as you can see, it's an RN2 by default. So I'm gonna use either the up or down arrows to change that to RN1. As you see, I press it, RN1, and to save it, I hit enter. Now my light is set to RN1, and my other light is set to RN2, which you can see right here. Right now, my remote is set to control RN2. So if I change my light, it changes color. And for this one, I'll keep this one on green. To switch the remote from REN2 to REN1, I need to hold down the up and down brightness buttons for around 5 seconds. Once that's done, now I can control my REN1 light via remote and my REN2 light over here will not change. This is beneficial because I can now control my REN1 group of lights without affecting my REN2 group of lights. If you have problems with your light, and your light's not spawning to remote. For example, I'm pressing the RF buttons on this remote. This light is not changing, but this is. This light here, as you can see, is connected to REN1. So my remote is paired with RF channel 1, which is REN1. If I go to channel 2 over here, this is in REN2. It will, it will not work. So if your remote's not working, to change that, there are two ways to change it. The first way is to set your light to REN1. Now, if I press the, the buttons, the lights will spawn the same in the same RF channel. Another way you can change it is by holding the up and down brightness buttons for 5 seconds to change RF channel. Now, if I use a remote, I can now change this light. And if you look here, this is an REN2 mode or RF2 remote configuration. And the other light here will stay in REN1 mode or RF1 configuration. One of the benefits of using RF remotes as opposed to IR remotes is that RF remotes, I don't have to point the remote at the light. For example, I'm pointing this remote in any direction, and as you can see, my lights are changing color. Another benefit to using the RF remote is that it has a much more increased range than the IR remote. This gives us so much more benefit to use the lights and the remotes at greater distances. And also, another benefit to the RF remote is that it's able to transmit the signal through thin walls and through some objects, unlike IR remotes. Another feature that the remote has is this color wheel icon over here. By pressing the button, you can select through any of the 32 preset colors that are built in into the light. To show that, I press this button here, color wheel, it defaults to red. 
Now to cycle through all the colors, use the up and down brightness buttons to toggle through them. So if I press this, now I can go through 32 different colors of light. The remote only works with these lights if it is in REN1 or REN2 mode. If you keep the light in any other mode, your remote will not work. Just make sure you're in REN1 or REN2, otherwise your remote won't control the lights. Now on top of the color wheel feature, we can use the remote to set the light to the base colors of red, green, blue, white, amber, or ultraviolet. You can also select all of the different modes on your light like sound, strobe, pulse mode, fade, and the auto mode. Now let's say you're using multiple battery par 6RFs for a production or a live venue setup and you want even more control over your lights. There are two different DMX modes that we can use, either 6 channel or 10 channel with a DMX controller. Using 6 channel or 10 channel is completely dependent on your needs or how much control you want to have over your lights. 6 channel mode gives you the basic control over the 6 colors and 10 channel gives you control over the colors and the different preset modes like sound mode, color change, etc. Now to set your lights into either of these modes, you're just gonna press the mode button until you get to the channel option here. Then you're gonna press enter, and from there you can use the up and down buttons to set the light either to 10 channel mode or six channel mode. For today, we're gonna use the 10 channel mode and press enter to set our changes. Now the benefit of using a DMX controller is that you can make a synchronized lighting effect if you have more than one par light set up. So let's go back to Anthony who's going to show us how to wirelessly connect our DMX controller to our lights. Now I'll be showing you how to set up your battery power 6RFs with a DMX controller. So we're going to turn our lights on. Now what we want to do is set our lights to 2.4 GHz and set that to be on. So I'll press the mode button until it reaches 2.4 GHz. Now that we're at the 2.4 GHz menu, press the enter button. And then from there, use your up or down arrows to change it to on or off. In this case, we want to make sure it's on. Then hit enter to save it. After that, we want to go to our DMX menu, which is a submenu. Press the mode button until you get to that menu. Once you're on that menu, you want to hit the enter button to enter your wireless DMX ID selector. Use the up or down arrows to change between your wireless DMX address ID. As you can see, it has 1 to 7, so you have 7 options to choose from for your wireless DMX channel ID. But for this setup, we're going to be using channel 1. Then, hit enter. First, we want to turn on our wireless DMX controller. To do that, press this big button here. And next to it is a smaller button, which is our wireless DMX signal. Turn that on. As you can see, our wireless DMX controller is sending out a wireless DMX signal by the light that's indicated right here. So what we want to do next is take our wireless DMX signal indicator, which is here, and we want to set this to red. Red corresponds with our lights we set previously to ID01. Next, we want to press the scan button on our wireless DMX console. And now our lights are connected to our wireless DMX controller. And as you can see, each of the faders now controls them. So after you've set up your DMX controller to your lights, we're going to want to press the scan buttons here on our DMX controller. So now let's go over what each fader does here on our DMX controller. Fader 1 acts as our master fader, so we're going to want to have that all the way up. Fader 2 controls our red LEDs, so if we raise that, you'll see the red coming through our lights here. Now depending on where you leave the fader, it will determine the intensity of the LEDs. So for example, if I lower the red, and leave it there, the lights won't be so intense. And if I raise it all the way up, you get full intensity. Moving on to fader three, this will control our green LEDs. Fader four controls our blue LEDs. Fader five will control the white LEDs. Fader six will control your amber LEDs. And fader seven controls the ultraviolet LED. Now faders eight, nine, and 10 will help us control the presets. So if we raise fader 8, this will help control the strobe mode. Now fader 9 will control all the other modes available on your light. So when you move the fader up and down, it will correspond with the number here on your DMX controller. So for example, if I set the fader between 101 and 150, this will activate the color fade mode. You can see the complete cheat sheet of fader 9 here. And last but not least, fader 10 controls the speed of all of the different modes. 
So for example, if I raise it all the way up in color fade mode, the colors will fade into each other a lot faster. Now, if you don't want to use a DMX controller, but you want to control multiple lights in sync, you can always use the master slave function. Once again, let's go to Anthony, who's going to show us how to set this up. What's up, guys? Today, I'm going to show you how to set up your battery power 6RF in master slave mode. The first thing we're going to do is to turn on the 2.4 gigahertz. To do that, we want to press the mode button until we reach the sub menu. Once you're on the 2.4 GHz submenu, you want to press enter to access the on and off menu. From there, use the up or down arrows to change to on or off. You want to make sure that this is on, and once you have on, select enter to save it. You also want to make sure that the rest of your lights are also set to the 2.4 GHz option. This will allow them to all link wirelessly together. Then, press the mode button uh, until you get to this DMX submenu, which is A001. From there, Press the enter button and now change it to ID mode. You want to make sure all your lights are set to the same ID mode. In this case, I'll be using ID 06. That way, they're all synced up together wirelessly. So now that we have the 2.4 gigahertz on and the wireless DMX channel set to ID 06, we're going to choose which is going to be our master light. In this case, I'm going to make this my master light. So on our master light, I'm going to change the different settings and those settings will be reflected throughout all my slave lights. For this case, I'm going to change it to a color mode. In this case, color 1, which is red. And after I change it, you can see the light on my right side is following the same command protocols. You can also send preset modes out via the master light, such as color changing, the pulsing, fade, strobe, and even sound mode. A good thing to note is that when you're using the wireless DMX function with the master slave configurations with the light, that your remote will not work. In order to get the remote to work, you just have to set it back to REN mode. So hopefully this showed you guys how easy it is to set up your battery par 6RF rechargeable wireless DMX controller. But of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to our customer support team through phone or email. As always, I'm Perry from Rockville, and we'll see you guys next time.